Hello and welcome to our GP Online Sabbath School. We're glad you're here. Please join us as we sing. Now, it's time for our Grace Lynn story. Hello, boys and girls. This is Aunt Fernita, and I have a wonderful story for you called He's Alive. The memory verse for today is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. It says, We believe that Jesus died and rose again. The message for today's story is we praise Jesus because he died and rose again. Have you ever known someone who died? Jesus died, but God raised him back to life. When Jesus lived on earth, criminals were put to death by nailing them to wooden crosses and leaving them to die. Jesus was not a criminal, but he was treated like one. Three men were to be crucified that Friday, Jesus and two thieves. Soldiers nailed Jesus to the cross with big nails in his hands and feet, and then they lifted the cross and dropped it into a hole in the ground. Jesus prayed for them, Father, forgive these people. They don't know what they're doing. Jesus really did love them. The Jewish leaders looked up at Jesus. He saved other people, they shouted, but he can't save himself. The soldiers made fun of Jesus. They put a sign above his head that read, This is the King of the Jews. Two thieves hung on either side of Jesus. One began to make fun of Jesus, but the other said, we deserve to die, but this man has not done anything wrong. Then he asked Jesus to remember him, and Jesus promised him that one day he would be in heaven. At noontime, the sky became dark, dark as night. People were afraid. Soon Jesus died. Joseph, Jesus' friend, took Jesus' body down from the cross and put it in a new tomb. A big rock was rolled in front of the tomb, and then the sun went down. It was Sabbath. Jesus' friends rested on the Sabbath day, but they were very, very sad. They did not understand what happened. What would happen next? The next day, 
Sunday morning, some of the women who loved Jesus went to the tomb. Suddenly, Mary spoke. Her voice trembled. Look, the stone that closed up the tomb is rolled away. Two angels in shining robes suddenly appeared before the troubled women. Why are you looking in a tomb for someone who is alive? An angel asked. Jesus told you that he would die, but that he would rise again on the third day. These women ran to tell Jesus' other friends, and the good news spread quickly. Did you hear? Jesus is alive! Jesus is alive! And Jesus is alive today. The good news about Jesus is still spreading around the world. And this is it. Jesus loves us. Jesus died for us, and he rose from the dead. Jesus is in heaven right now, and when he comes again, he will take everyone who believes in him to heaven to live with him forever. This podcast is produced by gracelink.net at Studio El Piso, Singapore. For more children's resources, please visit gracelink.net. It's story time with Mr. Willard. Howdy, boys and girls. How are y'all doing today? Mr. Willard here. And you know, the Bible calls us vessels. We are vessels or containers of the Holy Spirit. In 2 Timothy 2.21, we're called vessels of honor or containers. And what do containers hold? Different things around the house. Containers hold different things around the house, like a pot holds soup or a glass holds water. But we're containers of the Holy Spirit. When we ask Jesus to help us each day to be with us, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us do those things that are right and pleasing. Acts 2, 4 says that the the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. And I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that I can have a happy life and a good life too. Jesus will be with me throughout the day. Help me do those things that are right and pleasing to Him. And that's what we want to do, Lord, boys and girls, so we can have a happy life. The old devil, he don't like that. He's mad at God and he's mad at God's children. He wants to mess us up. He don't want us to be happy. He wants our life to be miserable. So he'll try to depress us. He'll try to have bad things happen to us. All of a sudden, he'll put something in our way. Bad, something uh, unpleasant will happen. And then then we just don't want the Holy Spirit. We want to be mad or or he'll tempt us. Want us to do something that's not right. He'll tempt us do that it would be a lot of fun or something but uh, when we do that then we lose the Holy Spirit you know then we feel bad but we're like we're like a contain container and this glass represents a container it's got water in it and uh, the old devil come along and say oh look at that Christian there he's got the Holy Spirit Let's see if we can mess him up so the old devil turn us sideways just like this and what happens oh boy here we go. Life's miserable. Yeah, we we don't want the Holy Spirit in our life. We want to do what we want to do. You know, I want to illustrate something. I got Mr. Willard here. You can tell that's that's Mr. Willard. It says so right there. See, Mr. Willard's all happy there. <laughs> Mr. Willard's a container. Container. And we're going to say this is Mr. Willard has prayed for the Holy Spirit to be in his life. And so we're going to put the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah, a little more out there. All right. Now, Mr. Willard's got the Holy Spirit in his life. He's happy. No devil comes along and says, ah, we can't have that. Let's turn him upside down and all around. We're going to mess his life all up. But Mr. Willard has a connection with heaven through prayer, through appreciation for what God has done for him, and through looking at nature, the beauty of nature. And he says, oh, the, the Lord made things so beautiful. For his children, he's blessed us, you know, and that, that gives us feelings of gratitude for what the Lord has done to us, of the Holy Spirit be in us. The devil wants to turn us sideways and upside down, so we're going to illustrate what the devil can do to us, but this stream right here is going to, going to also be an illustration of prayer. If we commit our lives to Jesus, then he'll help us, so let's see. 
Let's see what happens. We're going to turn this can every which way, upside down and sideways. Here we go. If I mess up, it's going to be all over Miss Marie's kitchen. She's going to be unhappy. Oh, round and round and round. Old devil's going to twist us all around and around and around and around. <laughs> He's not going to give us any rest. Surprise, surprise. Boy, he come at us from all directions, try to mess us up. But we have that connection with heaven. I don't think he's going to be successful to you. Here we go. Let's see. Let's see. Did Mr. Willard do the Holy Spirit? He got turned upside down. Every which way. Let's see what happens. Not a drop gone. Mr. Willard did a good thing. <laughs> and when we commit our lives to Jesus, he will help us day by day and keep us from messing up, keep us from being tripped up by that old devil. So let's give our lives each day to Jesus through prayer, through gratitude, and through appreciation for what he's done for us. Till next time, boys and girls. <laughs> Slapstick Theater Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar's Dream This is Daniel Oh, hey! Who was a Jewish man who was taken to Babylon when he was very young. Daniel served in the king's service as a wise man. Yeah! The king of Babylon was a man named Nebuchadnezzar. And one night, he had such a disturbing dream that he couldn't sleep. Ah! He called in some of the wise men of his kingdom and demanded that they tell him what he had dreamed. The wise men said, tell us the dream and we will tell you what it means. But the king told them that they must tell him what the dream was and what it meant. If they did, they would be rewarded. But if they didn't, they would be severely punished. Uh... The wise men asked again for the king to tell them what the dream was, and they would tell him what it meant. No. But the king wanted them to tell him what the dream was. The wise men said that the king's request was impossible, and that no one except the gods can tell someone a dream. The king was furious when he heard this, and ordered that all the wise men of Babylon be killed. Ah! Because of the king's decree, men were sent to find and kill Daniel and his friends. When the men arrived, Daniel asked why the king had ordered such a thing. The men told Daniel what happened with the king's dream, and Daniel went at once to the king to ask for time to tell the king what his dream meant. Hmm, fine. Then Daniel told his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, to pray to God to show them the secret of the king's dream. That night, God showed Daniel the secret of the dream in a vision. Daniel praised God for this and then was taken to the king. Come on! Daniel said, There are no wise men, enchanters, magicians, or fortune tellers who can reveal the king's secret. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the future. Now I will tell you your dream and the visions you saw as you lay on your bed. And so Daniel told the king what his dream was and what it meant. The king bowed before Daniel and praised him. The king said to Daniel, Truly, your God is the greatest of gods, a revealer of mysteries, for you have been able to reveal this secret. Then the king promoted Daniel to be the chief of all the wise men, and also promoted his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in the king's court. Hey everyone, it's coloring time. Are you ready? I'm ready. Today we're gonna talk about, guess who? Daniel. We're going to draw Daniel today. Ready? So let's draw. Let's make a small little line here. 
and then we're gonna make a long straight line here. Then we're gonna go another, and then we're gonna go like this, and these two lines, we're now going to connect them. Way to go! Next, we're gonna take, we're gonna do a circle here, and a circle here. Then, we're going to do a circle in here, and then we're gonna start coloring. Very good. Way to go. Next, we're going to take, on this side, we're gonna draw a long straight line like this, okay? And on this side, we're going to make another line up here. This one, we're going to curve it just like that. Then we're going to go across like this. Next, we're going to draw his mustache. He has a funny mustache. And we're going to take a line, but don't cross the nose. Way to go. And then we're going to go to the other side. Daniel has a funny mustache. He has like two raindrops. Ready? Like this, and like this this and like this you see that and Daniel likes to smile there we go next we're gonna do an ear over here an upside down C very good now up here we're going to draw a line just like that and we're gonna make a box just like that. okay very good now, the same kind of idea that we did over here, we're gonna draw it over here with his hair, teardrops. Ready? So we're gonna do a teardrop here, and a teardrop here, and then we're gonna do another one this way, and another one this way, and another one like that. And Daniel had curly hair, so let's put some curls, ready? One, two, three. Way to go. Let's do another one. Four. Let's do another one. Five. Way to go. And now to top it off, we're going to do two lines above his eyes. Ready? Very good. I love the way you draw. Now it's time for you to color. Thank you for joining us once again at our GP Online Sabbath School. We hope to see you again. Don't forget to visit our online website and our YouTube channel. And we hope to see you one more time next Saturday. Bye-bye.